So here begins the first part of this story. And this is my DevOps story, which began in 2007, which we could also call as the pre DevOps era. And here is how the state of the organizations typically looked like in the pre DevOps era. And this was a time when I was working as operations engineer for a, for a value based startup. And uh, I was part of the team, which was not only responsible for managing the application infrastructure, but also for cutting out the releases. So I was also working as sort of a release engineer at that point of time. Now releases is something that I still vividly remember from my days back in 2007 where releases were more or less like a thriller movie where you know you would it there was a there would be a you know sort of a, a tangible tension in the air there would be a lot of drama around it and at that point of time we were cutting the releases out to production every two weeks so twice a month which was pretty fast uh, for the time that is that was 2007 uh, however it was always like as i mentioned in a thriller movie where you know you wouldn't know what's gonna happen there would be a lot of anticipation we would put a lot of people on call including obviously the operations engineer that we were as well as the developers who had you know committed their changes to that particular release and uh, you know most of the times things would go, go okay but there would be times when and, you know it would not and we would have to call out call out the engineers uh, we would have to in you know get them involved there would be sometimes minor issues sometimes it would be major issues resulting in rollback of the product itself right so there was a lot of drama around that and that was the state of the releases because we were not always confident about the product going out second is as an operations engineer uh, or part of the release teams that we were in, we did not have a lot of insights into what went into the actual product and what were the changes which went in. So not a lot of insights into the actual product. It was like throwing, it was thrown at us uh, from that invisible brick wall and uh, we were sort of in dark, uh, but we were also the first responders. So we had to know, um, you know, or had to go and check what the issues were uh, when there would be production issues without the knowledge of what went in. The second part that I want to talk about from the pre DevOps era is the infrastructure. The state of the infrastructure was not very consistent at that point of time. We had a bunch of snowflake servers and uh, we were uh, as part of our operations team, we were all experts at, you know, the one liners and the scripts uh, and, you know, take it uh, shell or Python or Perl or said or awk. Uh, we had knowledge of, you know, we had experts at every single technology and most of the times though the changes that we would make would be reactive that's one second is the changes would be ad hoc to the infrastructure so we would log into the service manually and uh, you know make some changes or run some scripts each one of us had a bunch of scripts that we were comfortable uh, in and uh, a lot of ad hoc changes leading to a lot of inconsistencies at, at times we had production issues which you know uh, the root cause of that when we diagnosed was just some configuration being updated by someone and not informing everyone else about it. That was the state of infrastructure, very ad hoc and, you know, sort of a chaotic environment because we didn't have a way to consistently push the changes out to this infrastructure. Now, Talking about continuous integration, which was in a very nascent stage as stages at that time, and the tool that uh, some of our engineer teams, which, you know, were experimenting uh, with, was cruise control. We had heard about another new interesting tool called as Hudson, created by Sun Microsystems back in 2007, but it was all in a nascent stage, as I just mentioned. Uh, monitoring side of things was all Nagios for us and which was a very, very popular open source monitoring solutions. Uh, we didn't have a way to pull out the logs and centrally manage at that point of time. Uh, there was there was not a lot of observability systems that you see today. Uh, it was purely, uh, you know, a Nagios related or, you know, generate the metrics and uh, send out the alerts. And uh, the problem with this approach was 
we used to get a lot of alerts so there was the noise uh, ratio you know uh, was pretty high at that point of time where a lot of times we would get paged for the alerts which you know which were quite minor uh, in terms of the impact and you know uh, what used to happen as a result of that was we would lose the sensitivity towards the alerts at, at times as well right because you you're on call you're getting hundreds of alerts a night and the, probably only one or two are the ones which you really need to address immediately so you know that was the state of the monitoring system uh, at at that point of time and this is how uh, things looked like in the pre devops era in the next one, I'm going to start narrating how I saw DevOps starting out and evolving in the next few years.